Hey guys, welcome back to episode three of the Sunday Questions. So this is what happens in the Rustin household. This isn't coming out until about 9.30 Eastern time because we just put the kids to bed, but Lindsay and I are fast to work. We had some great questions over on Facebook, but before we get to them, I want to give a shout out to my man, Luke Briggs, who has done some amazing work on drjohnrustin.com, but he's also a colleague of mine up here in Madison, Wisconsin. He got hitched to his new wife, Jennifer, yesterday. Lindsay and I were in attendance at the wedding and the reception. We had a great time, and I just wanted to wish him good luck in the Bahamas and sticking to your macros. All right, guys, so let's go over to Facebook. We're going to pick out three questions here, and I asked for all training questions this week, and you guys had some awesome ones. Let's start out with Zach Adams. He asks, how would you go about designing a full body pre-workout dynamic warm-up? This is a great question because about 80% of my programs are off of body splits. So I'll split them with upper lowers or I'll split them with movement patterns. So it'll be a lower body emphasis, push emphasis, or a pull emphasis. But if you guys are only having a couple days a week, two to three days a week of training, it is more advantageous to get some full body workouts in. A couple different reasons for that, but just to get right to the question and answer, I would go a more extended workout. So I use a six phase dynamic warm up sequence that brings you from foam rolling all the way up into CNS development, but spend at least one or two different moves in each of those six phases. So you can spend up to about 10 to 12 minutes just to make sure everything is getting prepped. Or if you only have you know, that six or seven minutes that I have in that six phase dynamic warm up sequence, you wanna be prioritizing catch all movements. So mobility drills, stretches that really stretch multiple segments at once. All right, let's move on to the next question here. We got one from Michael Mash. In reference to your latest T Nation article, does direct arm work have a place in a beginner's program? Would someone that has literally never touched a weight in his or her life benefit from it, or would time better be spent elsewhere? This is such a good question because I did write the direct arm work article over on T Nation this week, and it really didn't get too much pushback because I think people are kind of buying into the, the idea that direct arm work is very, very advantageous, not only for aesthetics, but for functioning the kinesthetic chain. So I would say that you use two tests to see if you're ready for arm training. Can you do a strict pull-up? Yes or no. If you can do strict pull-ups and you can rep out, you're probably strong enough. You have a base level of strength where you can start doing some direct arm work. You know, the second one is, are you able to press your body weight? So like a bench press with a bar, can you press your body weight for a 1RM? If yes, then we can probably start into some direct arm work. But for many beginners, Michael, you're exactly right. You wanna be loading up the big compound movement patterns. So for me, I look at the big six. So the push, the pull at the upper extremities, the loaded carry, then down at the lower extremities, you got the, the lunge, the hip hinge, and obviously the squat. So loading up all of those and getting some variation in, that's the priority. But if your base strength is good enough, you can start putting in some direct arm work. All right, last one here is from Imad Medici. If you are consistently achieving strength and hypertrophy gains prior to an injury and layoff, how do you approach programming and how do you get back into it? An emphasis on one or the other. So this is a good question, but why would you have to do one or the other? You're not just working on strength. You're not just working on hypertrophy. The best programs are a blend of both. You know, similar to my muscle prescription or FHT programs, we get a little bit of everything in each program. Unless you are a power lifter or unless you are a stage ready bodybuilder, we want to really just be working in all the different attributes of a program. So dynamic warm up, uh, athletic development, strength, power, hypertrophy, and obviously metabolic conditioning as well. So I would say if I had to pick one, I'd be working in the hypertrophy ranges just so you can get back that mind muscle connection. You can take down the load slightly and then work back up in a periodized fashion to get back into the strength and hypertrophy stuff. All right, guys, until next week, this is Sunday Questions. We're going to be over on YouTube every single Sunday. So make sure that you guys subscribe to John Russin on my YouTube channel and you guys will get exclusive looks at this video before anyone else sees it. Thanks, guys.